Hello and welcome along. Uh, David, Mike Zero TPT from Martin Lynch and Son. And uh, we've got something a little bit special today. Um, I want to introduce you to Mike. Pleased to meet you. I'm Mike Gathergood, call sign G4KFK. I'm the sales manager for Bird for the EMEA region. That's Europe, Middle East and Africa. Bird, of course, these meters. Lovely job. So it's really exciting. I don't know too much about these meters. Um, so Mike's going to help us understand just that little bit more about them. And also we're going to talk a little bit about the history and just how these came about and um, just how long they've been around because they've been around for so quite some time, Mike, haven't they? That's correct. So Bird was founded in 1942, um, still family owned, a uh, private company. These products, the Model 43 RF Watt Meter was launched in 1952. So it's actually been on the market a little bit over 70 years. Wow. And other than the CE label and the plastic handle, which <laughs> replaced the leather handle, basically they're still the same after 70 odd years. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And did you, when was the company formed? 19... 1942. 1942. Wow. Yeah. In real terms, I'm quite new to the hobby. Um, <laughs> so when I first saw these, and I only saw them at rallies, you see, but when I first saw them, I, I had no idea what they were. And then over time, I've realized um, just how popular these types of uh, power meters are. What models do we have here okay. today then, Mike? So let's give you an overview of the basic model 43 watt meter. Uh, it comprises a um, line section, which is terminated each end with a socket, it can be any type of socket you want, but the default is N-type, um, a meter and a plug-in element. And I'll remove the element to show you. They're like that. This particular one is the 250H. So it's 250 watts um, full scale deflection for the HF band, two to 30 megahertz. Right, okay. Uh, we do other elements up to several kilowatts and up to a maximum frequency of 1.3 gigahertz. So um, you'll see it's got a nice helpful arrow on it. <laughs> it shows the direction <laughs> of travel. So assuming that the load, the antenna is on this socket and the source or the transmitter is on this socket, you'll see the arrow is showing forward power. And if I rotate it, it's showing reflected power. All or of right. course you could connect the source to that side and the load to this side. In which case, on that how you've got it set up in your shack. Indeed, and yeah. that would then be reflected. It really is that simple. The connectors themselves, um, I've removed the screws from this one to show you. They're easily swapped. This particular one is an N female, but we have others, for example, this one here is fitted with UHF uh, SO239 style connectors. So there are various other types. But it's a two minute job to just remove the screws, swap the connector for the one you want, put the screws back on. So in theory, if you needed to, on the fly, you could swap connectors out Indeed. really quickly, depending on how you've got that set up in the shack. Yeah, so there's no real reason to have adapters. You can all yes. have whatever type of connector you like with it. Perfect. Okay. So, so that's which the, one was that again? That's the basic Model 43. Model 43. As I said, we've got elements covering, in fact, down to 450 kilohertz. The P range elements do okay. 450 to 2.5 megs. This is the H range, 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz. And then we've got various other ranges up to 1.3 gigahertz. Um, and this one, this is another Model 43, but this one's been fitted with the optional peak envelope power. Um, measurement for single sideband. Well, we'll demonstrate that in a bit. What okay. I was really interested, I'm interested in this one on the end, because okay. uh, it's a little bit <laughs> different to... This one's, as you say, is a little bit different. This is not the Model 43. This is the 4304A. Again, QC connectors. This particular one's fitted with UHF, SO239 style connectors, but takes these as well. You'll notice this has an element that says 25 to 1000 megahertz, 500 watts. It covers that entire range. So that wow. includes the 10, 6, 4, 2 meter amateur bands and 70 centimeters. But it's also got a power range switch. You'll notice the calibration of the meter is 0 to 5, 0 to 15, 0 to 50 and so on. This switch selects 0 to 5 watts, 0 to 15, 0 to 50, 150 and 500 watts. So we have five switch ranges for 10, 
six. Got four, it. So you don't have feet. to change the slug. Nope. You can just use that. And did you say something that's a permanent slug? That can't... is permanently in there. Right, so okay. it's in fact it's secured with a screw. Yeah. The only thing you can do is forward and reverse or reflected power. Right. Okay. That's the only thing you need to worry. So about. you can quickly and easily just select the power rating that you want, and away you go. Indeed. Lovely. Yeah. So the um, the bird meters themselves, what sort of applications have you seen them used in? Uh, I know obviously we're really interested in for amateur radio. Mm. Um, do you use these in any, any commercial, commercial installations? Not so much these days. Okay. Bird manufacturers, um, RF power sensors for commercial applications. And Got one it. of the biggest now is semiconductor manufacturing, mm. measurements of the RF power, which excites the plasma that's used for semiconductor manufacturing. But they're looking for tighter tolerances at fixed frequencies, typically 13.5, 27, 40, yeah. 60 megahertz. So we do much tighter tolerance measurements, but on fixed frequencies for those kind of applications. These, um, this is the portable version. There's also a rack mount version, and there are versions oh, okay. with larger um, line sections, uh -huh. up to six and one eighth inch for broadcast. So. It's, this has a big brother, if you like, um, for broadcast television, mm -hmm. FM radio, oh, wow. up to sort of 50 and 100 kilowatt type um, power levels. It's a little bit more larger, than we're at but the, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're, they're, I, I was quite surprised by the weight of them as well. They're, they're quite heavy, aren't oh, yes. they? And, and you, you can imagine, I can imagine that in my shack actually, but I think with the ability to be able to change the connectors, I especially like this one, bit having the, the variable power, mm -hmm. um, but then I suppose you could get a, a one kilowatt slug in here um, and you can just, Indeed. That, that's yes. just gonna cover everything so that for, you need. For HF, these connectors and the line section is good up to five kilowatts and we do a 5,000 H oh, right, element okay. for a five kilowatts two to 30 megs. Okay, so um, should we have a closer look and demo one of the units? I know you were very yeah. busy wiring this one in. <laughs> um, Certainly, so let's take a look at the 43P with the uh, peak reading option. So we have here HF radio currently on 40 meters lower sideband. Uh, and I wanted to draw your attention to the peak envelope power uh, option. So right now the switch is out, the light is off. So that's that's the default. Okay. Um, just that's how it would perform power. normally. Yeah. That's how it would perform if the board wasn't fitted. So it's just reading the average power. And um, if you want to give a shout, and we've to got them, this plugged in. What have we got this plugged into? We've got a dummy this, load. It's plugged into a we've 50 ohm load. It's brilliant. out of sight, but it is definitely there. So okay. So if you speak into the microphone, one two one two one two. Now, obviously, we know that's a much higher power radio than we were seeing there but what you were seeing was the average power, so it's trying to average speech, speech peaks. Yeah. That's the purpose of the peak envelope power board. So if I now switch that on, and you do the same again. One, two, one, two, one, two. You'll notice there we were peaking about 60 watts peak envelope power. And that's on pretty that occasion, cool. Which is probably what the radio is set to, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Is there a model that you'd have to buy one of these with that in there? Is it a specific model? No, there's an option there. So you can either buy the model 43P, in which case the peak envelope power board comes ready fitted, or you can buy it as a retrofit kit, and I'll show you that. Let's remove the connectors. Right, I've already removed the four screws from the back panel on this one. Um, one, two, three and four, and the panel comes off. And if you can zoom in here, Normally, these two wires, the red and the black, would be terminated on the back of the meter movement. When you buy the retrofit kit, you remove the two screws from the back of the meter. The retrofit kit actually sits on the back of the meter and is secured by two nuts. The, um, the side pokes through to here. There's already a hole there. Ah, okay. If you refer to that one there, you'll see the hole's already there. We can store spare elements in there. But on this one, it's sitting in the spare element slot on this side, secured by the two screws, another screw here, and that's it. Um, it even comes with two batteries. The kit includes the batteries. So, so it's that easy to fit. If you wanted to retrofit your 43, yeah. you can just... All you need is a <laughs> nine millimeter socket and a Phillips screwdriver. Phillips screwdriver for the four screws and for the connectors there and the nine millimeter socket 
for the back of the meter. Oh, fantastic. 10, 15 minute job and you're done. Wow. So you can either buy it ready-made as a 43P or you can buy the retro. And you can modify it, it later itself. if you wanted to. Indeed. I have a question. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. I, I noticed <laughs> that uh, the bird meters that we stock come with these and you, you told me something interesting. So I'll, I'll let you okay. spill the beans on that one. Right, so the purpose of this is twofold. Obviously, firstly, to, to keep dust out of the line section. If I remove the elements, you can actually see straight through to the line section. So firstly, it's to prevent contamination of that line section. Also stops you putting your fingers yes, in when it's lined, yes. of course. <laughs> uh, more importantly, though, when it's fitted, it shorts out the meter movement. So it basically damps the meter movement. So if you're moving it about, posting it, carrying it about in the back of a van, this should always be fitted as that shorts out the meter movement and protects it from damage. Yeah, so if you're taking it portable or moving it from shack to shack, or perhaps you're a club and you've got one of these in your, in your club shack that you um, test or lend out or something. So don't lose that. <laughs> no, don't, don't, lose the, uh, don't lose the travel plug. And just one last thing before we go, I've always felt like a power meter is the staple diet of a, a ham radio operator and um, having that positioned in the shack. Um, over the years, obviously, Bird's got such a fantastic reputation um, that, that that's the predominant use for um, the Bird meters is forward and reverse power, isn't it, Mike? Well, that's correct. So these will obviously give you the forward power and the reflected power over there respective frequency ranges and power ranges. But we have come a long way since 1952 when these products were introduced. Uh, for as example, I'll show you the, this is our Sighthawk, which is a handheld antenna and cable analyzer. It's based on Android, so that's how modern it is. <laughs> as you can see, it's got a color touch screen, and this will give me a visual display of VSWR versus frequency uh, we have frequency on the horizontal, VSWR on the vertical, and being Android base, I can flip it around like that. <laughs> there we go. Um, or return loss on the vertical, frequency on the horizontal, uh, or cable loss, dB versus frequency, so I can see if my uh, coaxial cable meets the manufacturer's specs. Of course, oh, moisture being the yes. big enemy of coaxial yeah. cable. If moisture gets into the cable, losses increase, you'll be able to verify that with this device. And finally, distance to fault. In distance to fault mode, we have distance in either meters or feet on the horizontal scale and uh, dB on the vertical scale. So that would show me the distance to a fault condition. Um, and um, we'd therefore be able to go looking for the nail through the coaxial cable or a break or a broken connector. Or so we've got all... 75 years history here indeed and right bang up to date indeed um, for 2024 and we didn't stop here having developed this on the android platform we then went one stage further uh, it's a separate hardware platform but this is a handheld spectrum analyzer this is available in two versions uh, 9 kilohertz to 6 gigahertz or this one is 9 kilohertz to 7.5 gigahertz and this has a whole range of built-in tests including angle of arrival direction finding. Oh, right. So there's okay. a mapping feature built oh, in. Wow. It uses openstreetmaps.org and we can take plots on the map from various different points oh, very and see where the vectors cross. And that's the source of our interference. Wow. So there we go. As you say, uh, 70 odd years of history yeah. on the tabletop. And, uh, right up to date with yeah. the, uh, the new technology. Well, what can I say? I've certainly learned a lot today uh, about Bird. Thank you ever so much for coming in and, and sharing your knowledge and expertise um, with the Bird meters and um, especially the PEP. That, 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 I like the sound of that. Um, so there we have it, Bird meters. And um, we, we do have these in stock. So if you are interested, give us a shout. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. And um, if you want to see some of our future videos, then why not subscribe? But for now, um, that's Mike Zero, Tango, Papa Tango. David from Martin Lynch and Son, uh, wishing you best 73.